Joining me now in the studio, actor, comedian, producer, my man Marlon Wayans. Welcome back. What's up? Good to be back. Your voice is, you sound real crispy over there. I, <laughs> this is my Don Corleone. This Yo, is, you know. You sound, uh, that's, <laughs> this is the first time I've ever heard you sound Mexican. Like, really? <laughs> never. I've known you like 20 years. You've always sound like. You know yeah. why? You know accent. This time, like, yo, little, bro. You know why I'm still in a little bit of a high Mexico beating Germany over oh, the weekend. Oh, yeah. All day. All day. All day. Oh, man. No. I don't know who's going to beat these Ru- Russian cyborgs, though. Right? <laughs> what is they going got on all right the good, there? They got all the good drugs. Right. <laughs> it's like a bunch of Ivan Drago's <laughs> playing on that they field right the there. Even their bro. fans, like their hooligans, they went to like a boot boot camp yeah and they're all they're all drugged up too it's crazy and they just want to fight yeah well you know that's what the world comes out about and plus it's the home team is like yeah yeah, i'd fight too in in russia (laughs) well marlon it's always good seeing you man i had a lot of fun interviewing you uh on the today show yeah man that was was a fun segment and i was happy to see you on there i said that's a good look for you because oh thank you yeah you you know you like you because you're pleasant to that i don't mean this in a weird way but (laughs) like you're pleasant to look at in the morning like (laughs) Shake I haven't that. seen you have like I never looked on TV and was like, "Damn, Mario looks terrible today." <laughs> <laughs> and I don't sit around judging dudes. I mean, no, but, but you know, you look at women and you're like, "Oh, she looks beautiful." Today. You never look like uh, uh, terrible. I see why they don't put you like with like a woman all the time cuz <laughs> you know, the thing is y- y- you just wake up like I get. I hate doing interviews next to you because I know I look ugly. <laughs> I know it. So if I was a girl, I'd be like, I, I hate Mario. Clearly, the most talented and smartest of the Wayans brothers, <laughs> <laughs> and my personal favorite. Oh, that but, was definitely you paying me. Back. <laughs> by the way, man, congrats on season two of the show. It is funny, bro. And Thank I got you, other people. Uh, telling me that it's funny. So I know my buddy that does a podcast with me, um, he's a huge fan of yours oh, thank and, you. and the show itself. And these days, it's hard getting a second season on anything. So it's a great testament yeah, uh, to you, especially with comedies. Comedies seem very difficult to make work. I don't think they know how to market comedies. I think, you know. Is that what it is? There used to be a time where comedy was a thing and now everything wants, they, everybody wants to do like everything else but comedy. And I, I still think the business of comedy is a great business everybody needs to laugh and on my show i just try to i sweat um like literally i lose like 10 pounds a week because i'm just sweating working trying to make people laugh every second because i'm not trying to make a tv show i'm trying to make a classic i'm trying to make something that 50 years 100 years from now when i'm dead well let's say like 200 years from now when i (laughs) finally die right (laughs) yeah that people go man that show still holds up i'm still laughing so comedy much like good music it it does hold up good comedy i love lucy if it's on i stop whatever i'm doing i stop and watch and i get a laugh it's still funny classic isn't that a trip it's still funny and Speaking of comedy, though, because I know you, you, I, I respect the hustle and you're always out there uh, still as a stand up comic. Do you find it difficult these days and a little bit handcuffed on having to censor yourself on what you got to, what you can or can't say as a stand up comic? Because it used to be that comics could get away with, with saying anything because they were truth tellers and that was the whole. The whole I, still deal with think kind- you, I still think you can be a truth teller. I still think you can be edgy. I still think you can tell jokes. I, I, I just think. You know, the gift of the joke will always is not about what's in the box. It's how you present it. What is the wrapping paper? You can the fun is in wrapping the the gift of the joke the right way. You even like Don Rickles. okay, as wild as he was, it always came out funny he was an equal opportunity offender mm. he didn't have some hidden agenda it wasn't uh, uh um supporting some agenda of, of 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 some kind of hate his came from just yo he was just funny he did black jokes that made me made black people laugh like yeah we do we doing that <laughs> we know a good joke when we hear it and it's not offensive. We have gr- like black people, just like Hispanic people. Yo, we got great sense of humor. On my TV show, anytime I do a Puerto Rican joke, Puerto Ricans be like, "Yeah, bro, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying." Boricua. Yeah. We they they because I grew up in a Hispanic neighborhood, so I know how to deliver it. I know the package and how to wrap it so that it's it's a joke that everybody can bite into, and it doesn't have hate. It comes with kids gloves and the, anytime I come at something in a, uh, a stronger way 
I still do it with a purpose because the purpose is not to offend, it's to enlighten. And sometimes when you're enlightening and it comes from a positive place, people ain't going to be mad at you. Only people that's going to be mad at you is bad people. Mm. But, you know, there's certain jokes that you can't tell. And, you know, it's just not cool. If you frame it in a funny way, yes. Um, but I don't think your career should be snatched from you. I do think there's a, you need a timeout. You need a timeout. You need to reassess. You need to reapproach. You need to make a lot of apologies. And you need to take this time to grow as an artist to figure out how never to be in that situation again. Well put. And that was a good analogy. Too. Damn. The Thank way you, you brother. Deliver it, Thank man. you. The way you delivered it. Thank yes. you, brother. And and your show in particular is is about family. Yes. Which everyone, of course, can relate to. Uh, dealing with divorce. And I know it's loosely based on your, your own life. Is that still the case this season? Or do you... Sort of go in a different direction. Um, it's still based on um, on um, uh, on that. Uh, the the, uh, the shows about. Well, it's I've never been married because um, I knew I was gonna mess up. I, I, <laughs> I didn't want to lie. To, I don't, I'm just not a liar. I'm just like, listen. I don't think I'm mature enough at this age to really say everything that the preacher said we should say. And God's watching. I'm not gonna. Lie. I can lie to you. But God sees everything, and I'm just like I just rather not try. Good for you to recognize to, that. Yeah, not I could give you kids. We could do that, uh, you know, because uh, you got one on the way anyway. So what we need to do, you no, know, is like for me, I just want to love for life, and until I'm ready to really settle down and be married in that way, I just think that the best thing I could offer anybody is love and honesty and loyalty in, ter in terms of you know, um, my love for them is eternal. Um, me and my kids, mom, we, we broke up, but you know, it's funny after she kicked me to the curb, I found myself dating them more than I did when I was actually with her. Huh. I go, I take them to dinners. I, we go to movies. I'm, you know, we plan stuff. Let's go, you know, let's go to vacation. I took her on a vacation for her. 50th birthday and oh I told you age I'm sorry baby girl uh, <laughs> but but I, I just think it's important that you you start with love and you end with love and for the rest of that woman's life I'm gonna love her and nothing's ever gonna change that and I think that you know when you got kids involved the one thing your kids they, you don't need to be married they don't understand rings and things you know what they understand Mommy and daddy love each other. Right. And mommy and daddy communicate well. And mommy and daddy did a good job raising us because what I wanted for them is what I can't perfect, I want you to take it to the next level. So hopefully when you are ready to get married, that you know you're ready, you know you're responsible for a person, and you know how to communicate. And at the end, if you guys don't wind up together, you also know that just because love seems like it's over, it's not. It's not failed until you stop trying. So just keep on trying, never quit and keep loving your heart. And that's what the show is. And so this year we take it to the next level it was about dealing with divorce last time. Now this year it's about how do we grow as stronger as friends because you don't know where this is going. We don't know if we don't want about together. We don't know if we're going to, maybe we date, you know, I just want right. to have that show like a Sam and Diane or a, you know, a, 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 a mad about you where you, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't know. It's just right. like that, you know, you should be together, but she ain't. Why not? And then you explore that dynamic of that relationship. Keeps it fun yeah. and funny yeah. and romantic. Yeah. All at the same time. Cause I think that's right what there. you got to do in any relationship. Right. You marry, you know what it is. Oh yeah. Them kids running around, they take all the love out your house. Oh man, it's like well, they, they say like they say marriage is work, and I say yeah, you know, but the best kind of work it is. So you gotta, you know, you but you gotta put it in. It is. You, you gotta put it, it is. in. Speaking of which, um, I mentioned this to your Netflix special. Man is great. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wokeish. If y'all haven't uh, checked it out yet, and do you still make time for stand up? Is that still important to you, even with the uh, sitcom right now? Because you can only I so much time. I worked every weekend on the road when I was doing the sitcom. I would go out every weekend. And I would I would work on Look my stand up because I did my special. Now I got to create a whole new hour to work with. I probably got like a nice two hours now. I need about four more hours to then I'll be feel comfortable. Like yo, I got a dope new set. That's just the yeah. way I work. So it's kind of like a fighter training, right? You go out there. Yeah, you just keep learning new stuff. Yeah. You know, and you may do Muay Thai just to work on your feet skills, even yeah. though you're not going to kick somebody. But it, it just helps you know when you land that you can land back in a, a position to strike somebody. It's all about 
about pers- per, um, as for me, it's about growing as an artist. So every time I'm on the stage on a weekend, I'm getting better. So when I get to the show on Monday after working all weekend and I did eight shows, I'm back on set and I'm like, all right, this isn't funny. This isn't working. Here's how we can make this funny. I think the situation go. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scientist now. So it's not just I know this joke is going to be offensive to these people. Is it worth it? Sure. Uh, th- this joke is going to not land so well. I think this is this is pop cultural reference. Ten years from now, this won't be relevant. So I try to uh, use that and, and my skill set from the road to actually help me on uh, my other projects. And there's a, a writer and an audience in my head at all times. So that's the important thing. So speaking of stand-up, this weekend, I'm June 22nd, I'm at the Casino Rama in Toronto. June 23rd, I'm at the Cache Creek Casino in Brooks, California. June 25th, uh, <laughs> June uh, 12th through the 15th, I'm American Comedy Club in San Diego. And in and, and, uh, July 26th to the 29th, I'm just telling you, you asked me if I do stand-up. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> Caroline's New York City, uh, six shows, July 26th through the 29th, Caroline's New York. August 3rd through the 5th, Funny Bone, Liberty Township in Cincinnati, Ohio. August 10th through the 12th, Funny Bone, Albany, Georgia. Lastly, August 23rd through the 25th, I'm at the Comedy at the Carlson, Rochester, New York, five shows. Let's rock. Nice. And we will put up all those dates I am, on with Mario.com. I, nonstop, bro. I know, man. I, I love that. That's every weekend in the summer that I'm going to be working. Look at that. That's gotta awesome. I'm, gonna, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get to a great place. My first 25 years was about learning. These next 25 years is about executing. First, you know, I, I, I understand the game Ray, raised as a Jedi. Now it's time to really execute my, the the great in me. See, I love that you and all your brothers, all y'all have that strong work ethic. Absolutely, and, and uh, you know, I never rested on the laurel. So that's, you that's can, awesome, you man. know, it is especially that's in the how, business. Exactly, that's how you were raised, and this business keeps changing. And right. you know what? Here's the thing: you look still, you still look like a baby. I still look like a baby. These are our best years. We're gonna be going half on a boat in about <laughs> right? fifteen years. That's what I'm talking I'm about. See you in that's sa- what I'm talking about. I'm gonna see about. you in Sardinia or somewhere <laughs> weird in Italy. Like, yo, Mario, let's go half on the boat. Sure, let's drink some thirty thousand. Another one. That's too expensive for my blood. Ten. <laughs> I'm all about it. I'm all about it. From your lips to God's ears. Yes, sir. Before I let you go, I want to put you on the spot. Quick questions, quick answers. All right? Go for it. Go to karaoke song. Oh, oh, uh, my go to karaoke song is Creep. TLC by, Creep? No, Radiohead. Oh, Radiohead. I want oh, TLC. So weird. <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> you gotta put that little white boy. Hey, I don't belong here. You do the talking oh, songs like me. She's <laughs> running out the door. <laughs> I, I said TLC. That's amazing. <laughs> Such an he said TLC. <laughs> so I think, yeah, which, yeah. Which, by the way, he was about to do it with me. I creep it on the download. Hey, 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 that's not the song. I'd have been your left eye right there. Oh my God. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, last show that you binge watched. Last show I binge watched was uh, it's Netflix. It was the the, the drug show, Narcos. Narcos. It's good. Every huh? year, man. Right. I, I take one day and I do nothing. I don't take days off. That's the one day when Narcos comes out. I take off. I watch. I don't care. I'll start at six in the morning and I'm gonna watch it all the way till I'm done. God, that sounds awesome. I've never I don't done that. That sounds or awesome. Nothing. <laughs> Like I'm all about knuckles. Like I forget food. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm on crack by the time it's over. That's a commitment. That's a commitment right there. <laughs> celebrity crush growing up. Ah, uh, celebrity crush growing up. I'd have to say Janet Jackson. Favorite stand up right now. My favorite stand-up comedian is probably myself because why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> why Perfect not? Uh, but uh, there, there's too many good people out there for me to, too many great people out there for me to pick one. But I love watching Chappelle because every time I watch him, I actually uh, learn something new. He's like a, 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 a great magician that really understands the magic of his craft. And it's not that he's it's an illusion. But what I love about Dave is Dave can walk into a, a, a theater that's 
20,000 people and make it feel like he's talking to 300. Mm -hmm. And I always find that amazing because the adrenaline of 20,000 people would make me explode. But what I watch him is he just has a, sits in a pocket and he's just comfortable. And I like the way he walks his material. Even though he knows it, he explores mm -hmm. his material. He could have done it a thousand times, but each time he explores it, he takes a different journey there and it makes it that much more fun and interesting. So for me, I, I would never steal a comedian's jokes, nor would I steal a comedian's habits. But I always feel like if you're going to be great, there's great things to learn from great people. We all do something different. I could I could list five comedians and tell you who does what great. Chris Rock is like a, a, a great painter who goes, he'll draw it and go, uh, I'm not going to put that out. And you're like, why not sell that? Uh, Kevin is a wonderful salesman. You give Kevin that kind of joke, like three words on the joke, and but like, here's what's funny: you got to do this, and he paint the picture, and he's gonna give you, and he, he he'll sell he'll sell the hell out that joke, and he he's really good with you know relating to the audience and having fun with his material. Uh, Chris Rock is like a brilliant preacher. You know, he's somebody that it's like if you had a sermon when he's talking. I like when he brings it back too, and he discovers his jokes and he'll just come off the top and read some stuff off a pad and he'll, <laughs> he'll just say it. And he, he don't care if he bombs. I love that about him. And I love watching each one of my brothers. I learned something from each one of them. And Sean Wayans, one of the funniest dudes that people don't even know because he's never dropped a special. My brother Sean is somebody I've learned from every day and probably my favorite comedian working today because that dude can do it all and you don't expect it from him. He's good looking and he's got a st certain stature about him. He wears his glasses, but when he's on that stage, you watch this guy animate, sweat, tell great jokes, really smart, quick on the on the dime. That that boy's a he's a monster. I like that you have his back. He's he's been here a couple of times too. A real nice guy, just yes. like yourself too. So that's cool. Last one. Which show? I'd say he was a nice guy. I'd just say he's a, <laughs> he's a brilliant comedian. He's a terrible person. <laughs> I love you. What show should get rebooted next? Uh, Wayne's Brothers. Let's bring it back there. Hey, yeah, Wayne's yeah, Brothers, right? Because you know, you know, they. I don't know how long NBC Marling on last. They, they, they cancel black shows quicker than Roseanne. Uh, uh, the, the irony. When they cancel her. I was like, damn. Ooh, they doing that to white people? We in trouble. <laughs> Talked about looking the same early. You guys rebooted that. You would look exactly the same. Ah, be on that we show would. Right there. That'd be funny. I was hey, gonna say Saved by the Bell. You almost stepped ah. in. <laughs> but your castmates look terrible. Oh, my the screen's still alive. What's going on with him in this life? Well, he was locked up for a little while, but now I think, I think he's out. I think he's out. He's, oh, he's out? Okay, okay, good, good, good. He's, he's right. a stand-up comedian now, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he, 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 oh, he allegedly on. does comedy. I want to watch this. Yeah. I want to watch this. No, you, know, you don't. He does, he does comedy, does porno. He does it all. He does it all. <laughs> he does it all. <laughs> he's known. He had a crack name. He a crack name, Screech. <laughs> he really is a crack name, Screech. It is. It is. Man, you, you, where you get them drugs from? Screech. <laughs> I'm going to be quiet. I'm gonna say no, I'm gonna be quiet. You ain't got to say nothing. I'll say it all. <laughs> What's he going to do? Hit me with his, with his meat? <laughs> I don't know. He stabbed a guy on Christmas Day in a bar. That's oh, well, true. I'll take that back. I'm sorry about that. Uh, screech. It's a true story. I'm actually. sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Dustin. <laughs> I'm tell you about your government name. A name called Marlon, man. Please come back anytime. Congratulations on everything that's going on. I appreciate God you. God bless you and the family. Marlon airs Thursday days on NBC. You can follow him on Twitter at Marlon Wayans. Thanks so much for stopping by. My God. On with Mario Lopez.